As far back as 14 years ago, someone was sounding the warning call about Bante Wilmaramsi and the danger he would present to any who might have faith in him. Let's review that testimony now. So here's the channel. It's called Wilmaramsi, and it contains three videos, each one entitled Wilmaramsi fake monk, and then a number. Let's take a look at the first one. So this was posted on September 10th, 2009. Oh, hi, Ev. I'm making a video to speak about Vemela Ramsey. Before I speak, I just want to say I'm sorry for this crazy lighting behind me. Uh, I've set up a, 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 temp, a temporarily uh, edit light because I'm, make, I'm making this about seven or eight o'clock in the evening and it's dark now. So I only, I just, I just looked at the light there. So I only have a, a, a red bulb. So sorry about the, the sorry about the crazy lighting. Uh, I'm an ex-Buddhist monk. I was a Theravada monk uh, in Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, uh, Sri, Sri Lanka for for two years, and I know Vimla Ramsey well. I I I lived with Vimla Ramsey during this time. I practiced with him. Uh, we shared. We were quite. Uh, we spent a lot of time together. I was Vimla Ramsey when he lived in northern Thailand in Chiang around Chiang Mai city. Uh, he wasn't called Vimla Ramsey at that time. He's changed his name, which for a monk is very suspect. Monks normally don't uh, change their name without good reason. So I'm sure Vimla Ramsey will say he has good reason, but I forget his name anyway. Uh, yeah, so Vimla Ramsey lived mostly, uh, he was friendly with a German monk called uh, Tan Santi, uh, who I think now is in Australia. And uh, Vimla Ramsey lived, lived in Wat Umong, uh, just outside Chiang Mai. I was part of a, a, a small circle of about, at the height, there was about seven of us. We were Western monks from various countries. And we lived in a, a, a Burmese-style Vipassana temple called Wat Rampong. It was about 15 minutes walk away from uh, from where Vimala, Ram Vil Vimala Ramsey lived. Uh, so the main reason I'm making this video is I propose that Vimala Ramsey shouldn't be a monk. He should be uh, disqualified from being a monk. And I don't say this lightly. I know it's a very serious thing to say. Uh, according to the monk's rules in, in Pali, I... Pali. I, studied, I studied basic Pali language for two years when I was a monk, or a bhikkhu as they say in Pali language. Uh, in Pali language the monk's rules are called Vinaya, and there is four, uh, what's in English, English you call them rules of defeat, or in uh, uh, Parajika. And if you break one of the rules of defeat, uh, you, you, you can be disqualified from being a monk for life. This, you're, 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 uh, you're defeated. I, uh, I'll tell you why I suggest Vimla Ramsey has broken one of the rules of defeat. Uh, he claimed to have supernatural power, which uh, he was exaggerating about, and he seemed to do this uh, knowingly. And the, the Vinaya, the rules say that if a monk knowingly breaks the rules, or if he does it in good faith, then it's a different scenario. But if a monk does it knowingly, then he's, disqual he's disqualified, he's defeated. So what happened is uh, I was a, a monk in Wat Rampung uh, when Vimala Ramsey returned from one of his uh, uh, long trips to Myanmar. I think he was living with uh, in Sayadaw Ujanaka's temple, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I was there when he came back, and Ujanaka was claim uh, sorry, Vimala Ramsey was claiming that he had achieved uh, the, the passing the Janas, the high, you know, like that he got all. All the Vipassana Janas is 16, uh, Nyanas, not Janas, Ny Nyanas. And he had the corresponding uh, uh, insights and supernatural powers. And he, he talked, he talked, him and I spent hours together talking about this. However, at least two other monks who were there in Burma at the same time as Vimala Ramsey uh, and met Vimala Ramsey when he was in Burma, their account their story of what Vimala Ramsey was doing and Vimala Ramsey's account of what happened, they did not match. 
In fact, they were they were greatly at odds. Uh, knowing Vimla Ramsey the way I've known him for years, uh, with great respect, I have to say that uh, he is known to exaggerate. Uh, the emails I had with him some years ago, uh, about two or three years ago, uh, I'm br- he told me not to tell people, but I'm br- and I, I said I wouldn't, but I'm breaking my promise. I'm being honest about it because I think for the public knowledge sometimes it's it's good to to break confidentiality so i'm I'm holding my hand up i'm putting i'm putting my hand on my heart and i'm breaking my confidentiality vimla ramsey so in the emails i have from vimla ramsey he told me that he was having communication with the angels were in in the the devas and the devas were telling him that what he was teaching was the exact same as what buddha taught two thousand years ago and that Vimala Ramsey was given the original Buddhist teachings. So who knows if he have if he has communications with the, uh, angels or not? But it's quite a unusual thing to be saying, and it's commonly a sign of uh, it is known to be an ex- a sign of either insanity or inflated ego. So I'm not I don't know, uh, but I do know that. Uh, because of what Vimala Ramsey said he had achieved when he came back from Burma and what at least two other monks told me they witnessed Vimala Ramsey uh, going through in Burma. Vimala Ramsey was saying he was meditating for 16 hours a day and these other monks said well I never seen him meditating for that point I just seen him ill and and lying and resting so uh, it looks like he wasn't telling the truth it looks like he was lying. He was, uh, and he. I have emails from him where he admitted to me that he didn't tell the truth. So, unfortunately, so I know Vimla Ramsey helps many people. Uh, I know he's a kind man. Uh, he helped me. I done it. He led me through a, a what what called a, a, a meta retreat where he helped me to breathe through my heart and to feel. Uh, it was very healing. So I think he's a good teacher. But I don't. But he is according to the Vinaya. Uh, I propose he shouldn't be a monk, he should teach as a layman. Uh, He's a kind man, he's probably quite a wise man, but he's prone to exaggeration. Some of the claims he makes on his videos are very concerning. One thing that was uh, really, I mean, uh, I'm a father, uh, but one thing that Vimla Ramsey says is that children who are born and die shortly thereafter, they, they were killed, they died because in their previous lives, they were evil people, or they were butchers. He actually says they were butchers. So where does Vimala Ramsey get the authority to to make these statements from? I imagine it's from it's from his deep meditations, and so it's just I think I think Vimala Ramsey is unbalanced in some ways. Uh, so I'll be posting other videos, and uh, this is just a warning to say if if you do want to get involved in Vimala Ramsey, I I. I would, I would just friendly say be cautious and don't believe everything, don't, well you can believe everything if you want to, but I would just uh, say be cautious because uh, there is a reason. I, I, I have witnessed the Bimla Ramsey exaggerating on numerous occasions and when I stopped being a monk in Thailand, my friends, they also noticed that uh, some things about him were good and some things were not good, so uh, Anyway, I'll probably post some more videos, so uh, thank you for watching. Bye. Okay, now let's check out the second video. Oh, hi. Uh, Vimala Ramsey 2, second video. Uh, just had just had some... Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, just to remember some things. While, uh, two or three years ago, while I was emailing, I think even uh, at that time I was phoning phoning tele, uh, phoning, phoning Vimala Ramsey as well, but mostly it was done by emails, but I remember uh, I told Vimala Ramsey that I suspected him of uh, Parajika, of, of exaggerating, and that was why he sent me the email saying that yes, he was confused and he didn't know, he was just fresh out of Burma and he didn't, he wasn't sure what he should say and what he shouldn't say, and then he acknowledged and he admitted that as part of his confusion, confusion, uh, he said some things which, strictly speaking, weren't true, which is what I say uh, why he why he shouldn't be a monk because uh, uh, he broke the rule. 
he claimed to have supernatural powers and uh, to have achieved things which he which he hadn't. <laughs> Excuse me. But I'm making this video because of part of the other monks didn't only say that he was exaggerating about what happened to him in Burma. Uh, they said that actually he was a complete failure in Burma. He was ill. He didn't meditate. He couldn't meditate. Uh, so not only did they say that. Well, they said he was lying. Basically, he he was he didn't what he said he experienced. He didn't experience because they they seen him. They they were there. Uh, uh, so when I was discuss one of the monks who uh, told me this, this monk was a monk for about fifteen years. So him and I discussed at length uh, this other monk's experience of Vimala Ramsey and he told me that Vimala Ramsey had told him some things which he doubted were true. One of the things he says was that Vimala Ramsey had told him that he was a successful uh, carpenter in I think in California, I'm not sure of the exact location, maybe not California, but that Vimala Ramsey had told my friend that he was a successful builder, building homes, uh, uh, I think wood, I don't know what kind of home, maybe wood wood structure homes. But Vimla Ramsey and I discussed this, I was honest with Vimla Ramsey and I said, listen, this is what I think, this is what I've been told. So Vimla Ramsey responded by saying, well, yes, this is, I, I hear you, Stephen, but I'll supply you with evidence, I'll send you a uh, proof. So the reason I'm posting this video is because I just remembered Vimala Ramsey mysteriously didn't send me the proof that he said he would send me. Uh, I, I seem to remember there was a few things he said that he would do that he didn't do, but one thing I definitely remember is he said, oh Stephen, I can prove to you, I'll send you proof so you know I wasn't lying, that I was a, a successful builder. Mysteriously he didn't send the proof. So I suspect there is a, there's lots of reasons to be cautious about the things that Vimala Ramsey says. He communicates with devils. Sorry, slip up. I apologise for that, Vimala Ramsey. That was a mistake. I, I, I hand on heart. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, but I, I'm going to rephrase. Uh, you, you claim to communicate with angels. The angels tell you that what you're doing is... Uh, a complete mirror reflection of uh, your teachings are a mirror reflection of what Buddha taught. You might be telling the truth, maybe you are, but if you go to the, the psychiatric wards and hospitals, what you're saying could come straight out of the mouth of people that are mentally imbalanced. So I would, I would just say to people, uh, you know the thing about plan for, hope for the best, but plan for the worst. So I think if we hope for the best with Vimla Ramsey but plan for the worst. I think there is significant evidence to suggest that Vimla Ramsey uh, is not always telling the truth or uh, he's uh, he's disingenuous. Some other name you could say you could be more cruel with, with your terminology but I'll, I'll say disingenuous and uh, not always telling the truth. Uh, yeah so just to, to caution uh, to suggest caution when dealing with Vimala Ramsey and please don't believe everything that he says because I do accuse him of exaggerate, exaggeration and uh, if you look at some what Vimala Ramsey told me he says all my students say all these things about me on videos so I don't say these things it's my students that say them so getting other people to exaggerate for you Getting, uh, allowing other people to to do your to do your bidding, well, allowing them to say things, and if you if they view you as your teacher and you allow them to say these things, it's, you're saying them. You're like it's other, otherwise all you have to say is don't say don't say these things about me. But uh, he's not doing that. He's allowing uh, his, his students. Uh, what his main student posting on YouTube is called uh, begin to see. So begin to see as a fanatical follower of uh, Vimla Ramsey. Begin to see is David Johnson. I, I've had email corresponding with, with him and 
I think it doesn't matter what Vimla Ramsey does, then begin to see will always defend Vimla Ramsey. So thank you for watching and uh, okay, take care. Hold on, I'm going to turn off. Take care, bye. So what he said there about David Johnson being a fanatical follower of Bonte Will Ramsey, this is the case. They had a guru-disciple relationship, and David Johnson has made it very clear that his loyalty is to Bonte Will Ramsey and his teaching above all, and that includes above the truth. Now, so far, some of the statements that Stephen is making here are a little bit confused and out of line. But what he's saying about his interactions and knowledge of Bonte Wilm Ramsey and his behavior seem consistent with everything else we've seen. Oh, uh, Vimala Ramsey, fake monk three. Listen, I'm really sorry about the, the dark light. Uh, this is terrible. I'm uh, posting a video without my light, so I'm really, I apologize for the dark side. <laughs> I apologize for the dark side of my face. I'm really sorry. But listen, I'm going to cover up now. I'm going to go to my computer. So I just want to show you what's happened since I posted the, the video about Vimala Ramsey. So I posted the video about Vimala Ramsey, the fake monk. And so I'll just, well, just to confirm, uh, Here's the video. Oh, I'll just play a second. Right, look. Uh, I'm but I just want to sh look. That's the tenth. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. Tenth of September, two thousand and nine. So, I want to show you what happened. Is it's definitely as a consequence of posting this video. Uh, hold on, I'm just scrolling up. Look, this is what happened. I got an email. Uh, I'm not going to show, I'm going to cover up my email address, but look, uh, Bante Vimala Ramsey wants to be your friend. Bante for you. Do you want to add to your friend's network? Bante for you is the email address and handle that Bante Wilm Ramsey was using around this time. So I'm, I'm, being, I'm being careful to cover up my email address here because I don't want to give away my details, but uh, I don't know if you can see, Tuesday 15th of September. So it's like five days after that I call him a fake monk and he sends me a... Uh, he sends me a... Uh, an invitation to be his friend. I'm going to cover up my address, but I'm going to I'm going to show you. Look, I don't know if you can see, but it's uh, I can't read it. It's Bante, yeah, Bante for you at yahoo.com. So I'll show that again. Don't know if you can see Bante for you at yahoo.com. Oh, there it is. Like Bante for you, Bante. Uh, Bante Vimala Ramsey wants to be your friend. Uh, do you want? So I'm just I'm going to cover up again. I'm going to cover up and go back to the corner. So it just strikes me as a very, I don't know. It just strikes me as giving mi mixed messages. And uh, I mean, if you call someone a fake monk, it's definitely an unusual way to respond to them. Just to to get not any any explanation or anything just an invitation to become friends I must I must confess my I have some computer expert friends and they have warned me that that kind of uh, invitation if you join it uh, it's a common way of, of infecting your computer so I'm not I'm I'm, I'm skeptical I'm skeptical that it's that it's an innocent gesture and even if it is an innocent gesture uh, it just strikes me as a very unclear, unskillful. In Buddhism, they talk about upaya or uh, upaya or skillful means. Well, it just strikes me as a non-upaya response, uh, without any clarity or explanation. Or, I mean, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard from the guy, uh, Vimla Ramsey, for three or four years. 
maybe say about two, three years, three years I would say, or maybe four years, three or four years, and then suddenly after I post the videos calling him a fake monk, he sent me an invitation to be his friend. So at the least it's lacking in clarity, and I suspect it's actually more. So that's just, that's just an example of what I mean about being careful about Bimla Ramsey. Uh, okay, thank you, bye. This last video was strange. Perhaps there's some some missing context here. I'm not sure what this friends request was occurring in, if that was a Yahoo Mail thing in 2009, but it's pretty strange to jump to the conclusion that Bonte Wimramsi had any computer hacking skills. He most certainly didn't. And it seems like what happened here was he was sending a friend request to initiate a conversation somehow. Again, I'm not sure why he couldn't just send a, an email directly. And maybe that's what Stephen was confused about and suspicious of. But I would just chalk that up to maybe Bonte Wamramsi not being proficient at operating this particular software. Probably what Bonte Wamramsi was trying to do in this case is win him over or convince him to take down the videos, something like that. Then the same person has another YouTube channel, and it contains another video about Bonte Wim Ramsey. This one was uploaded on September 8th, 2010. So it's about a year after the first videos. Hi, this video is to give a, an alternative view of a Buddhist monk Vimla Ramsey. Before I, before I speak, I'm sorry about the lighting that I've rigged up for this video. I'm aware it makes me look like a criminal, <laughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, regarding Vimala Ramsey, uh, I was I was a monk for two years. I was I knew Vimala Ramsey. I lived with him. I've posted numerous other videos about him. I'm concerned that people are going to be hurt. That he's going to hurt people because he's not. He's not in my. It's my understanding. He's not been completely honest, and he's uh, exaggerating uh, what's happened to him. I was there after he came back from his long retreat in Burma, and uh, what he's saying now about what he experienced when he was there is very different to what he was saying when he first uh, came out of Burma in 1988. When he came to Thailand uh, after after uh, leaving Burma, he says that he was very confused, which is very different from what he's saying now. He's saying that it's uh, uh, very Sayadaw Ujjanaka, I think he says, or Upandita authorised him to teach. That's not what he said when he left Burma. He was saying that he was confused and uh, it's quite different. Interestingly, uh, there was a Korean monk uh, who was in Burma at the same time as Vimla Ramsey. He wasn't called Vimla Ramsey then, he's since, ch he's since changed his name. But anyway, the Korean monk, uh, the Korean monk alleges that Vimla Ramsey didn't do much meditation during the, the two years that they both lived in, in Burma. Uh, there's ve and Vimala Ramsey told me in confidence, but I'm breaking the confidence. Vimala Ramsey, so um, I agreed to, be conf to, to keep confidentiality, but I'm now breaking the confidentiality. Vimala Ramsey told me, either by phone or by email, that the angels, the, the Buddhist uh, devas, told him the, what he is teaching is the exact same, the exact same technique as the Buddha practiced. Only Wimala Ramsey knows if that's true or not. Listen, I'm, so I'm trying to move the camera to keep the light better. Sorry, sorry if it looks. Uh, so, anyway, sorry. Only Wimala Ramsey knows if uh, if the the devas, the angels, do communicate with him. I personally suspect 
that he's suffering some kind of a uh, unbalanced mental state because what he's saying now in 2010 about his experience after he left Burma and the time in Malaysia is quite different. What Vimala, Vimala Ramsey talks about about the meditation temple in Kuala Lumpur, the biggest temple in Malaysia and the large retreats that he done. I also lived in Brickfield's temple, it's called Brickfield's temple and it's, it's a non-practice temple. Uh, so to teach meditation there it's kind of not something that you should shout about because it was quite a it was a non-practice center and uh, the, the practice tradition people tended to avoid it because it was kind of viewed as a a corrupt temple where you could make money if, if you were if you were so inclined so Vimla Ramsey has changed his story over the years and I'm just concerned that uh, innocent, vulnerable people will be attracted to him because of how he presents himself, because of how he allows his followers, his devotees to present him. And I think he's presenting a misleading picture of his biography. So this is just a, a word of caution uh, to be, I would just, I would just want to say be cautious about Vimla Ramsey. Okay, thank you. Bye. And once again, I'm sorry for the, the bad lighting. Sorry. Bye. Well, this was certainly good advice. Unfortunately, if you searched for Bhante Wimaramsi or Twim in the intervening years since these videos were posted, you would be very unlikely to actually encounter this important warning. Here around the same time, in 2010, there was a thread on Dharma Overground, which is Daniel Ingram's forum. And here we have a post by Stephen Hendry. He says, I begin this post because I seen there was another thread about Bhante Wilmaramsi, BV. I wish to talk about my personal experience of BV. Perhaps I am worrying about nothing, but after contemplating this issue, I don't think I am worrying about nothing. I am concerned for the welfare of vulnerable people who may go to BV for spiritual guidance. I was a monk for two years in Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. For most of those two years, BV and I were close friends. We lived in various temples together. There was a little gang of Western monks who practiced together. BV was on the outskirts of our little freelance group. I even attended some of his meditation retreats he led in Malaysia after he returned from Burma. Why I am concerned about the welfare of vulnerable people who may look to BV for spiritual guidance is that over the years, on various serious topics, I have witnessed firsthand BV radically change his story about his meditation experiences and alleged attainments. I have challenged BV about his various contradictory stories he used and uses now about what happened to him in Burma. His response to my first challenge was to say, that when he first arrived back in Thailand slash Malaysia after Burma, he was confused about what had happened to him, so the things he said may not have been very accurate. Of course, his story sounds feasible until I say that I talked to a Korean monk who was in the same temple as B.V. in Burma, and that the Korean monk alleges B.V. hardly done any meditation at all in Burma. Of course, Korean monks often are hardcore meditators, especially the ones who visit Theravada countries. I met a few of them in Thailand, and perhaps his standard of hardly done any meditation may mean that BV only done 15 hours daily. So perhaps BV really did do lots of meditation. BV swore me to secrecy, but he told me that angels slash devas visit him in his meditation and have informed him that what he is teaching is identical to what the Buddha taught. Does B.V. swear many of his students to secrecy? Has he told many other people they must keep his secret meditation attainments confidential? 
and in the meantime, of course, his confident students are very loyal to him. As we've seen, this is the case. They're extremely loyal to Bhante Wilmaramsi, the person, not to the Dhamma, not to the truth, but just to their guru. Knowing B.V. for some years and having seen him change his story about his attainments and also witnessing what looked like a compulsion to be revered, it is my feeling that B.V. is a disqualified monk. In my view, judging by the monk's four Parajika Vinaya rules, he is disqualified as he has broken one of the rules of disqualification. In my view, if you listen to what B.V. says on YouTube, he has many extreme views For example, he says that all babies who are born dead or die very early were butchers in their last lives, and they died as a result of their negative kama vipaka. In my view, we all have opinions and we are entitled to them, but B.V. does not say it is his opinion that children who die young were nasty butchers, etc. He says the children were butchers. For example, he knows firsthand their comic conditioning. Considering my personal experience of B.V. over the years, I am very concerned that he may damage vulnerable people. Well, this concern was justified. He did go on to take advantage of people, damage people, mislead people. 